When at the end of the 19th century the ornate floral, natural feminine, and simply delightful Art Nouveau style had just emerged, no one could have imagined that the works of the novice jeweler René Lalique would drive the world's first fashionistas crazy. When the talented master got tired of staying within the framework of precious monotony, he decided that it was necessary to dare. To realize his childhood dreams, to create something new, daring, even outrageous, and he certainly succeeded. Of course, I have already written about the most famous creations of a genius and a hooligan from jewelry art, but René Jules Lalique is simply endless, and he has rare works of art, which in my opinion, outshine even his most illustrious masterpieces. The intricately decorated world of nature, femininity and love was a reflection of the French master's sensuality and imagination. Lalique was a true ladies' man, he adored women, which is why his collections so often show fairy faces of fairies, dragonfly girls, butterfly maidens, scenes of love meetings and dates captured in the bosom of pristine nature. By the way, the jeweler, artist and blastblower himself was married three times. If the first marriage, because of his youth, was fleeting, the second wife was taken away by heaven, but a son remained. Then the third wife, Malik's true love, caught up with him at the age of 52. And the loving husband became the father of two more children. Isn't this a reason for inspiration and new crazy ideas? Another interesting point, from about 1920, when the firm of the famous jeweler began to produce products made of glass, the creator of fabulous jewels often began to use amazing sketches of one of his daughters, Suzanne Nalik. Wives and daughters he called no other than his girls, and driven by a breath of high inspiration, created the cutest things especially for them. When he was just starting his natural beauty empire, Many jewelry salon owners prophesied a disappointing ending for René Lalique. They considered his buzzing creatures, myriads of women's faces and intertwined spikes creepy, vulgar, unesthetic, and they exclaimed with a chorus that no self-respecting lady would wear such a thing, but how wrong they were. Of course, his fantastically delicate, magical brooches, Necklaces and crests did not look at all against the background of strict black dresses with old woman's collars closed tightly. That is why lovers of the new jewelry fashion began to sew more frivolous, daring and open dresses to order, giving freedom to bare shoulders, seductive outlines of breasts and necks. René Jules Lalik seems to have achieved, in no small part, a more liberated fashion and daring outfits for the ladies of the early 20th century. After all, he was a true connoisseur of feminine charm, perhaps in his collection of creations, which we know not so well, found jewelry for the beautiful half of humanity of all ages. Judge for yourself, here on a golden branch sits an important owl, itself made of noble gold. Green enamel recreates for us a picture of a primordial forest. And the irregularly shaped white pearl pendant resembles a drop of icy morning dew. The owl, as a symbol of wisdom, has won the hearts of ladies of elegant age, and the graceful execution of the brooch became attractive for young maidens. And again we are enchanted by pearls, all their silvery iridescent shimmers. Such realistic, almost alive grasshoppers embrace shimmering pearls with their paws. The necklace is like a hymn to green lush meadows and summer fields. Have you ever seen such a thing? Of course, and the dress for such a piece of jewelry needed not ordinary, strict, covering the charms, but spiritual and romantic, emphasizing the female status of a forest fairy. The fairy tale of glass buds and diamond leaves, dipped in strokes of spring green enamel. This is the whole Reen Lalique, exciting, unconventional, awakening sensuality. What do you think of a precious kiss? shining with the gold of intertwined curls in the heavenly blue of fresh foliage. Perhaps even princesses, impresses and wives of sultans would dream of such a brooch. And delicate azure or blue fabrics matched with such a brooch, and not vice versa, could create the best dress for any holiday. And here is something that you will surely like. A pendant in the original Russian spirit, 
gold, delicate pearls, beautiful aquamarines and snow-white enamel tell the tale of snowy winter. In my opinion, this jewelry is definitely about Russia, both past and modern. After all, the Russian empress not once bought many jewelry pieces from Lalique and swooned with delight in admiration. However, to buy novelties from the French jeweler tried not only the Serena, but everyone who had enough money. Even the pupils of the Institute of Noble Maidens bought brooches, bracelets, studs and hairpins conqueror of women's hearts and dressed up for their lovers. They piously believed, if you wear a brooch with the face of the forest fairy, then no groom will not resist, and the future marriage would definitely be happy.